I took this footage at a construction site near my home last winter. The rest of the building had been constructed rapidly with the help of machines, but the brick facades, which relied entirely on manual labor, took weeks to complete. Bricklaying is one of the many antiquated fields in the building construction industry. It has barely changed since the invention of bricks back in 7000 BC. These earliest bricks were made from clayey soil that was sometimes mixed with straw and were dried out in the sun until they were strong enough for use. They were also called mud bricks. Let's remember that the term brick is a generic word encompassing a wide variety of products in the shape of a cuboid. A few thousand years later, in 3500 BC, humans moved to kiln-fired bricks, which was popular in cooler climates. Romans spread the knowledge of fired bricks far and wide across Europe, thanks to their mobile kilns. They even paved roads with stone bricks, which greatly improved ground transportation. In addition to these fired red clay bricks, concrete bricks were also used in Europe in the 1st century AD. Red clay bricks crossed the Atlantic with the Dutch and British immigrants in the 1600s. All these early examples were solid double brick walls with an infill of rocks and concrete. The bricks themselves were joined together using mortar, adhesives or by interlocking them. Nowadays, solid brick walls have been replaced with brick veneer walls, which are faster to build and weigh less, so the cost of the foundation and structural support can be reduced. The airspace between the brick veneer and the structural elements acts as a drainage space. Weep holes are provided at the bottom of the brick wall so that any water that has penetrated is directed outside the building. The brick veneer wall is tied to the structure with metal straps or brick ties. Bricklaying has long been recognized as a tedious and laborious trade that takes a toll on the human body. Masonry workers often develop shoulder, arm, wrist and back problems and are essentially trading their body for a paycheck. While bricks themselves are now standardized in shape and composition, the method of laying them hasn't changed in centuries. This mysterious footage was recently uncovered, showcasing a purely mechanical bricklaying machine back in 1967. The machine spreads the mortar as evenly as a skilled man who has spent half a lifetime doing it. The motor mason sounds almost too good to be true. Actually, it is modern method applied to an old craft. The narrator claims that the machine can lay mortar and bricks 10 times faster than a human. It is mechanically raised in the vertical direction to lay courses. In the horizontal direction, it slides on fixed rails that are parallel to the wall. This footage proves that the inefficiencies of bricklaying have been recognized for decades, but there haven't been any innovations in the field to automate the process and relieve humans. That is, until now. SAM 100, short for Semi-Automated Mason, is a bricklaying robot designed and engineered by Construction Robotics. Scott Peters, an engineer, and his father-in-law, Nate Podkaminer, an architect, conceived the idea of a robot that wouldn't replace construction workers, but just enhance their capabilities and lower the risks to their health and safety by reducing lifting of bricks by 80%. SAM 100 can place between 300 and 400 bricks per hour, compared to a human which can lay around 60 to 75 bricks an hour. It uses a metal robotic arm to spread mortar on bricks before a laser-guided system lays the bricks in rows. It is designed to work on large, uninterrupted walls, so humans must brick and mortar the first 5 feet of any area, as well as corners and around windows and doors. It is best used for the facades of schools and factories, which have large continuous surfaces. Apart from the obvious advantages, since it is semi-automated, it guarantees that brick layers will still have a job in the foreseeable future. It works alongside them, it is not trying to replace them. This might quell the concerns of labor unions and hopefully make the robot more widely accepted. Also, the construction industry is one of the most inefficient and unproductive industries in the world compared to agriculture, manufacturing and others. The construction industry is failing to meet the infrastructure needs of the human population. There is an underinvestment in technology and a strong dependence on manual labor, both of which lead to a lack of innovation and automation in the industry.
This bricklaying robot is a step in the positive direction to remedy this problem. Construction is also facing a severe shortage of skilled labor since the older generation is reaching retirement age and the younger generation is shying away from manual labor, so we need solutions to fill that labor gap right now. But there are some drawbacks to this robot. First off, it costs $500,000. This is a huge upfront cost, which will deter a lot of companies, especially smaller builders. Other limitations are that it cannot build corners, bricks around window and door openings, and it cannot adjust the coursing or plumbness if the site conditions aren't ideal. The reliance on humans is also a drawback. It requires masons to feed the bricks, pre-mix the mortar to the right consistency and feed that in too. Masons also have to clean up the excess mortar and finish the tuck pointing. During this video, a worker on site is interviewed and he says that he's confident of not losing his job to the robot for now because it is only good for long spans of walls, which aren't very common. He also thinks that the robot requires too many workers to take care of it, feed it bricks and mortar and clean up after it. Another disappointment is the speed at which it works. I understand that the technology will improve with each iteration and it has the advantage of working 24 hours a day, so it will be more productive than a human over the course of a day. But have you seen how fast some of those expert masons work? Here's footage from a Brickling World Championship competition in 2018. As long as wages stay reasonable, it will be tough to compete with humans, especially on smaller jobs. Finally, the biggest flaw in my opinion is the fact that we aren't rethinking bricklaying. The company has built this fantastic robot that is automating an antiquated task with so many variables and unknowns rather than proposing a new way of constructing a brick wall that is optimized for automation. A new way that removes all the previous variables like prepping the perfect motor mixture with the right slump, relying on humans to install brick ties, ensuring that the courses are perfectly level, etc. Anyone who has worked in the construction industry knows that things never go perfectly according to plan. Drawings are one thing, actual execution is completely different. Why are we accepting bricklaying the way it is? It has stayed the same for thousands of years. Isn't it time to rethink it? Novabrick is one such example that could change the bricklaying industry and it could be ideal for automation. It's a self-ventilated, motorless, brick cladding system established in Canada in 1996. The bricks are made of high-strength concrete with a rock face or a smooth face texture. Rather than the typical cuboidal bricks, these Nova bricks have tongue and groove joints so they can be easily slotted in place. The installation method doesn't require any mortar. They are screwed into vertical battens every fourth row. It provides all the aesthetics of brick without the hassle of mortar. The company estimates that the installation can be three times faster than traditional brick. Now, I'm not saying that Nova bricks are the perfect solution, but they embody the principles that can change the brick laying process. There are fewer variables and the installation is easier to automate. Let me know what you think about this video and about the bricklaying robot as well in the comments below. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. See ya.